We can also create custom one-off truss designs and first of all to do that I might just create a cross section of the building. If I click on the section tool and I might just for the sake of illustrating this point do something that is a bit left of centre. Now I've got a section of the roof long ways and I'm going to put a strange truss going down the centre of the building. Now I just want to change the ceiling line of this building so if I just go to the 2D line tool and I'm just going to select the line and choose a particular pen doesn't really matter what pen it is at this stage, pen 23 and I'm just going to draw a truss and I'm just making something up so it's not going to be structurally correct. So I've drawn two top chords in orange now I'm going to change to a dark blue pen and I'm just going to line that up. The smart guides are fantastic in this application. Just going to draw some web members of the truss. And that's all my webs. And then I'm going to choose another pen type to pen 31 which is just a purple colour and I'll draw a straight line to here and I'm going to put an angle up into there, a bit of a vaulted ceiling there and now I'm going to select all those lines so while I'm on the line tool I'm just going to go control A so it selects all the lines and then control C which is copy or Apple C which is copy close it, I'm going to go to the floor plan I'm just going to paste those onto the floor plan, move it over to the side a little bit. Once it's there, I'm going to select them all. Then I'm going to go Design, Design Extras, Trust Makers, Create Truss. Now, this palette opens up. Now I can choose the type of section. Either going to be rolled steel, hollow section, or timber construction. I'm going to pick timber. And what it will look like in floor plan. Even though it says stainless steel, I might change this to a pine. Structural bearing is a layer that it will go on over here. In truss profiles, it's asking me what profile or what thickness each pen will be in the truss. And we can see the different pen types down here. So the orange pen at the moment, we're going to make that 70 thick, 120 high. We're going to make all the widths the same. The blue member, make that 50 mil wide. Sorry, same width, 70 by 70. And the webs, or the bottom cord now can be 70. Might make that 90. So once we've got all the timber sizes right, and save that as a library part, and we can save that to an active library. At the moment, I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And then as soon as I've done that, that green bar there is indicating that it's already transformed it into a truss. So I'm just going to drag that into the building. And Control D drags it over. And just going to line it up properly. Make sure the truss is in the middle and I'm going to open that elevation again by right mouse clicking on it. Now it's at the wrong height, I've just put it in at zero so I'm going to grab that in the elevation window, control D and drag that up to the right height. And there's that truss. Now when I go to the 3D window we can see that custom truss. But Trussmaker can be a valuable tool to create not just trusses but other framed objects that might have many members like balustrades or um, rails of different sorts, you just got to think a little bit laterally. And so if I just go back to the cross section, if I select that and delete that out of there, close the section window. Now I'm going to create some trusses going through 
the building the other direction so that we can multiply it. So this is probably a more logical way to create trusses. So I'm just going to create a quick section through there. Right mouse click on that, open the section elevation. And here I'm going to draw, just use a polyline to draw a line to, as a bottom cord, that was pen number 62. I'm going to change this pen to pen number 12. I'm just going to quickly zip around here and make the outline of a truss. Finally, I'm going to change the pen to a blue pen. And the smart guide's really handy here. Even though I'm being a bit sloppy here, but I'm just going to quickly put a truss together. Now I'm going to hit the line tool, go Control or Apple A, select all the lines, go Control or Apple C, which is copy, close that, paste it to the floor plan, and move it away a little bit. And we can see my lines have gone over a little bit, so I'm going to select the lines. I'm just going to edit that first. Just by holding the control key down, the, the scissors come up and I can just click on those like we did with the walls and trim those lines back. And then I'm going to select all the lines again and, and just to make it a little bit different, I might just delete that part of the bottom cord so I can have another little vaulted ceiling area in this truss. So just so it's not a conventional shape, then I'm going to select all the lines again, go to design, design extras, truss maker, create truss. And I'm just going to keep all these presets at the moment, just go save as, I'm going to save it as Untitled 1, save it to the desktop. It's important to keep this saved within the project so you don't lose that object. We talk about saving library objects and where they should be kept in another movie on this DVD. So now I'm going to drag this truss over to our building and I can do that by three ways. I've just pushed Control or Apple D and dragged it over but we can also use the pet palette of course. And as I move it over to that wall I'm going to select the pet palette and I'm going to rotate that truss around so it's going perpendicular to the bottom wall. So I click that, I'm going to sec select a node on the bottom of this truss and I'm going to select a node on the bottom of the other side so that we're parallel to the object and the project. Then I'm going to click on it and rotate that around and the smart guide is going to let me snap to it. Once it's straight, and I put it in the right position, I can select the section elevation marker which is S-05 and I'm right mouse clicking on it and opening that up and we can see the palette come up I click on open section elevation or I could have just gone to the navigator view which this palette is just off to the side of my screen and it won't fit on at the moment I'm trying to maximize the amount of space or what we see on the screen so we can see here there's in the sections Elevations under the project map, we can see that there's S5, S-05 elevation is there. I could just click on that, which is probably the best way of doing it. So once we've got it open, I can grab the truss, and I'm going to go Control or Apple D, and move it up into the right position. Once it's in the right position, I can go back to the floor plan, I can multiply it. As I'm moving my mouse over each object, it's selecting, and once it's blue, I'm going to left mouse click on it, and wait for the palette to open, and the palette is opening automatically on the multiply planet palette, because if I I'll just go cancel because that was already there, because it saved that from a from an earlier function that I did, but. I've got my finger on the mouse button, left mouse button there, and we can see that the pet pelts come up, so I'm just going to go over to the right button, which is the multiply button at the end. Now I can rotate, drag, copy, or elevate it. I'm going to put it on drag at the moment. Um, it's usually on increment, 
that's the default setting but if I click on spread I can change that to 900 centers or I can use these other options as well if I push OK I can drag these I'm holding the shift key down so it stays in line and push OK there's all my trusses if I go to 3d we can see the effect of those trusses and how they are sitting in the building the other thing we can do is use library parts to create the same sort of thing so if I'm just going to go control Z delete all those trusses which delete the last truss as well now if I go to the object tool and under folder view I'm going to click on find library parts type in truss find we can see all the different types of trusses there I um, might just select this truss here and as I go up to the preview and positioning if I click on what it looks like in cross-section elevation and we can see the elevation of it and if I expand the accessories mode I can change the type of truss if I change the amount of division so I can change that to any value I'm going to change that to four and if I know the span of the truss I can enter all that in this window also now if I go back to the preview and positioning window the little arrow um, if my mouse just hovers inside that window a little arrow comes up and I can rotate that around to where I want it installed from so the dark cross or the hot spot down the bottom of that truss is where that truss will be placed with it, that orientation that is in that window so if I push OK I select it now I didn't adjust the span correctly in that window so I'm just going to stretch that in this plan view so now it's the right length and if I open the section I'm going to select the truss drag it to the right height and we can still see my 2D lines from the last truss that I, my custom truss that I created so I'm going to delete those once it's in the right spot I can grab that but you'll notice that the elevation line is also selected so we don't want to multiply that as well so I'm going to click my left mouse button outside the building to deselect everything and select the truss again and I'm going to go to the multiply command in the pet palette and this time I might spread it by putting six copies across that roof and click outside it, deselect it, go to the 3D window and there's another way of using library parts to create trusses for the building.